So God is saying at this time, don't stay this side of the Jordan, because if you stay this side and you don't move now, then you're not going to inherit what I have for you. So this is a Kairos time where whatever God is speaking to you right now for you to do, it may not be like a physical move, but whatever he's saying to you, you need to be really attentive and cross over in order to align yourself because he has already established and determined in heaven what is yours. But now this is where your faith will meet his will and your inheritance will manifest. But you need to make an action here for this to happen. So if you go to Numbers 32, it says, Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of livestock, like sheep. And verse 5 says, they said to Moses, if we have found favor in your sight, let this land be given to your servants as a possession. Do not take us over the Jordan. And Moses said to them, shall your brethren go to war while you sit here? Which just this shows so much the heart of God, because God always sees things in terms of the body of Christ as a whole. And he wants everyone to be fighting for each other's inheritance as a body of Christ, not just thinking in terms of what suits you individually. So then Moses said to them, why will you discourage the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord has given them? And Moses goes on to say to them, this is exactly what your fathers did um, when they were right next to the land of Canaan. They discouraged the heart of the children of Israel, so that they did not go into the land which the Lord had given them. So then, so what Moses is talking about, he's talking about what happened in Numbers chapter 13, which is when um, he asked each man from each tribe to go and spy out uh, the promised land, Canaan. And Caleb came back after spying it out and he said in verse 30, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. But the other people said that the other spies said that it wasn't possible and they gave a bad report. So the children of Israel decided we're not going to go into Canaan. So what happened is fear took a hold of them. And they listened and they looked at their natural circumstances. Instead of choosing to believe in the word of God. And this then meant, uh, the result of this was that God said to them that in, so in chapter 14, verse 34, God said to them, according to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely 40 years. Then what happened in verse 39 is that they suddenly realized that they had sinned. So they said, here we are and we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised for we have sinned. And Moses said to them, don't go up and try to take possession of now, because if you go up now, you, the, the Lord isn't with you and you're going to fail and be defeated. But nevertheless, they went up and they had no success and they were destroyed. So, well, they had to run away. So, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, which represents God's presence, didn't leave the camp or Moses, their leader. So they had tried to do something in their own strength to try and reverse what God had now said that they would spend 40 years in the wilderness which didn't go to plan at all because God had already decided through their disobedience that they were going to have to be 40 years in the wilderness. So that's a really big lesson here. Like you need to move when God says to move, um, because if then you decide like, oh, actually, I'm going to do what God said a month later or a year later, it might be too late <clears throat> because there's always a Kairos time. So then if you go to Joshua chapter one, so Moses um, dies and then Mo um, God chooses Joshua. And in Joshua chapter one, verse nine, the Lord says, have I not commanded you, Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. But you shall pass before your brethren armed, all your mighty men of valor, and help them until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you. And they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of the Jordan toward the sunrise. So, <clears throat> so they decide um, to cross the children of Gad and Reuben. They decide, even though the land here is better for them in terms of their lives and their livestock, they're going to cross with all the Israelites so that they help them defeat all their enemies and that they help them to take possession of their inheritance. So that's good. And then Joshua chapter three, it says Joshua rose early in the morning and they set out from Acacia Grove. So Acacia Grove in the Hebrew means a place of thorns, points and spines. So Acacia Grove spiritually represents a place that is difficult. And if you think about it, the Israelites have been in the wilderness for 40 years because of the sins of their fathers. And now they have to cross over this Jordan and believe that God, they're not going to drown. And they would have drowned if God hadn't um, made the water dry, uh, got, got rid of the water, made the land dry. You know, they would have drowned. So they're looking at this Jordan, which looks really impossible to cross. So they need faith that God is going to make a way supernaturally and they need courage because they've been through a wilderness. When you've been through a wilderness, your mind and heart are affected and when you go through a wilderness, um, you're, you probably are feeling quite drained, you're probably feeling quite disappointed, you've, you've, God has really purged your character, you've really been refined in the fire and the thought of crossing uh, a, a Jordan and crossing into something new and beginning something new and knowing that you're going to have to battle against your enemies in the land of your inheritance isn't the easiest thing to deal with when you've been through a wilderness emotionally. If you haven't been through a wilderness and there's a Jordan, then you'll be like, yeah, come on, let's do it. But they've been through 40 years of hardship and desert land right so they haven't been flourishing they haven't been rest there's been no land of honey and milk <laughs> you know it's been really hard and the Lord said to Joshua in uh, chapter 3 verse 7 this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses so I will be with you and promotion comes when um, we obey and we cross over in faith God will meet us there also when we take that step of faith God does supernatural things so like in verse 13 in chapter 3 God said and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off the waters that come down from upstream and they shall stand as a heap and then in chapter in verse 15 it says and as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priests who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water that the waters which came down from upstream stood still so and then it says all the people crossed over opposite Jericho and they crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. So this shows when you take that step of faith, according to what God has spoken to you, obviously, that's <laughs> very important. Then when you see the presence of God make a way, once God sees your faith, God then makes a way for you to cross, right? So the two have to come together and it was completely supernatural and they literally witnessed the power of God and a miracle as, as it happens. So God is saying like, I know you're tired from your wilderness journey, um, but now if you make the choice to step over, 
step over armed for battle to take what is rightfully yours. And um, as Jesus said, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And if you think about it, um, the people, the children of Gad and Reuben, who eventually went back and dwelt this side of the Jordan, um, it was like an act of intercession because they sacrificed what they wanted and fought on, on behalf of the inheritance of all the children of Israel. And that is a servant attitude, yeah? And then God rewarded them and said, now I'll give you the land of Gilead. But if God said to them, if you don't go and fight, then you're only going to have possessions in the land of Canaan. But God said, if you fight, then I'll give you the land of Gilead, which was a much better deal. So um, it's God wants the whole body of Christ to cross over together into this um, new season. In Jesus name. Amen.